Sure. And there is, there is one thing that I was uh, saying to Professor Sato, is that if you check the proof up to this uh, part here, there is nothing really relevant. Up to here, there is nothing really relevant on uh, self-similar processes. In fact, if you do the same construction for any process, you will get up to here without any problem. Okay? But from here to here is the key step because we get rid of this dependence on the starting point. And this dependence on the starting point, we get it from here by the construction. And that is just really using the, the scaling property. Okay? And here is where the, the scaling property is really, really important. So we get something that is not depending on the starting point. Okay? And we get this. And from there we get the independence of uh, the stationary, uh, yeah, of the increments. Okay? And um, let me check if I have it here. This, and this, that this does, doesn't depend on x0, it's just coming from here, okay? Just try to write it, you will, you will, see, you will see it is almost straightforward, okay? But it's, it's this fact that is the most important in all this proof, okay? And in fact, This proof that I wrote here works essentially uh, for any dimension. This works for dimension, I prove it for dimension uh, one, when the process is strictly positive, okay? But I will write at the, at the end of the, the course the general proof. And in fact there we, can, we will see that from here we will go to here by just taking the angle of the process, okay? And so, when we go to a bigger dimension, here we will have something that depends on the past only through the angle of the process at time t, okay? So this process that is here, in dimension uh, bigger, okay? It's a process that we will have a similar property of independent Increments, okay, and stationarity, but just the, the, the increment will depend on the angle of the process at this time, okay? That is what makes appear what I call Markov additive processes, which is the dependence of uh, yeah, the generalization of Levy processes, okay, when the jump structure or the movement of the process depends of, on, an, uh, on some environment. That environment will be given by the angle of the, of the, of the self-similar process, okay? Is there any question about this? Okay, if there are no questions, then I, I move uh, to some precise results on a stable processes. I want to make some uh, explicit calculations for stable processes. In particular, what I want to do is to determine the, the, stable pro the process that is related to a stable process, okay? The Levy process that is related to a stable process. into our next section, which is some explicit calculations for stable processes, for stable
processes. Uh, by a stable process, we mean a levy process with the scaling property. For all c positive, c times x t, c to the minus alpha, t positive, has the same law as x t for t positive. Okay? This, when x here is equal to zero, and alpha is in between zero and two. Okay? In this case, we say that x is an alpha stable process. Okay. In dimension one, well, this is scaling property in dimension d. Okay, is such that the characteristic exponent exponent psi should satisfy that psi k lambda is equal to k alpha psi lambda for all lambda in Rd and k, k positive and uh, psi is such that exponential of i lambda xt is equal to exponential of minus t psi lambda uh, pop, 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 for lambda in Rd. Okay. So it's just the property, the scaling property that I wrote here, okay, that gives that the characteristic exponent should have that property. The, the, the characteristic exponent should have this property. Okay. Uh, when the dimension is one, the characteristic exponent can be written as this minus c lambda to the alpha times one minus delta uh, sine of lambda. This is a fun the sine function. Uh, tangent of pi alpha divided by 2. And this happens in the cases for lambda in R and this for alpha in between 0 and 1, or alpha in between 1 and 2. For alpha equal 1, it is equal to minus c lambda 1 plus i delta 2 divided by pi sine of lambda log of absolute value of lambda, when alpha is equal to 1, lambda is in R. And then it's minus sigma square 
lambda squared divided by 2, lambda in R, when alpha is equal to 2. Okay? So this is a Brownian motion, this is a Cauchy process, as this is an alpha stable process. Okay? Any other alpha stable process. Uh, for the proof of that, of course, I will not do it. I can just refer to Sato's, uh, Professor Sato book. Yeah. First line, minus, no minus, first line. First? No, uh, uh, about that. This one? Yes. Yes. Oh, th there is no minus here? Because of what, how I wrote it, yes. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Okay. So when alpha is equal to 2, x is a Brownian motion. Okay, so it is continuous. Okay, and when alpha is in between 0 and 2, then x has no continuous. part, okay, so all the movements of x are given by the jumps, okay, and x has a levy measure that is given by by dx given by a constant c plus dx divided by x to the 1 plus alpha for x bigger than 0 when alpha is not equal to 1 and c minus dx absolute value of x to the 1 plus alpha when x is smaller than 0. Here again, alpha is not equal to 1. Okay. Here I must say that when this is in general, okay, but if alpha is equal to one, the self similarity only holds if delta is equal to zero, okay. If not, uh, if not, it is not, uh, it is not uh, self-similar. Okay? That's a case of a symmetric uh, Cauchy process. Okay? And when alpha is equal to 1, the Levy measure takes the form dx, absolute value of x to the square, when alpha is equal to 1. And that is for all x in R. It's just to settle the notation. This delta is what is called the skewness, skewness parameter. Okay. 
and, uh, and the constant c that is there is given by minus c plus plus c minus gamma of minus alpha and cosinus pi alpha over 2. Okay. And there is rho, which is the probability that x1 is strictly positive. Okay. Notice that that doesn't depend on t. Okay. And rho can be written in terms of delta and alpha as 1 half plus 1 alpha pi arc tangent, so inverse tangent of delta tangent of pi alpha divided by 2. Okay, you can check all these details in Professor Sato's Sato book. This process is uh, self-similar, but is not uh, positive. Okay, so I will be considering another process, which is uh, the process killed at the first passage time below zero. So, y t, let y t be x killed at the first passage time below zero. So if we denote by t zero minus the first time where xt goes below zero, we denote, we take yt to be xt if t is smaller than tau zero minus and zero if t is bigger or equal than tau zero minus. Okay? So, if we have a process uh, that starts from x, okay? So just recall that x issued from zero, from x has the same law as little x plus x, where x is issued from zero. Okay? So starting a Levy process from little x is just shifting the path to x. Okay? Okay, so we start from a capital, a little x that is bigger than zero. So this process, when alpha is different uh, from two, will have a lot, a lot of jumps, many, many little jumps, a few that are bigger. And then eventually it will jump to some level below zero, okay? And instead, of uh, continue observing the part of x, we stop the process and we stick it to zero, okay? And that uh, sticking to zero, we understand it as sending the process to a cementary state, okay? So whenever it goes below zero, we kill the process, okay? So the process y has this path, okay? So it is important to say that x tau zero minus minus, so which is the limit as t grows to tau zero minus of x t, this is strictly positive if and only if pi of minus infinity zero is bigger than zero, okay? But pi 
of minus infinity to zero being bigger than zero is equivalent to say that c minus is strictly positive. Okay, and this, if alpha is in between zero two, when alpha is equal to two, the process of Brownian motion, so it will hit zero continuously. Okay, if uh, c minus is zero, the process will hit zero continuously. Okay, in all the other cases, the process will hit zero, will go below zero by a jump. And I would like to prove the following theorem, which is that let psi star be the Levy process associate to y via Lamperti's transform. Okay, so y is the exponential of psi the time change. Okay, psi star. Okay. So we have that psi star has the following characteristics. Okay. The lifetime of psi star follows an exponential distribution. distribution of parameter uh, c minus divided by alpha. Okay. So if c minus is zero, the exponential is infinite almost surely. Okay. C minus equal to zero means the lifetime, which is c, is equal to infinity almost surely. Okay? That's the first uh, characteristic. The second characteristic is the Gaussian term. term is sigma equal to zero if alpha is smaller than two. And here I must say that alpha will be always smaller than 2. Why I remove the case alpha equal 2? Because the case alpha equal 2 was a deal tomorrow, yesterday. Alpha equal 2 appears in the Bessel process uh, example. In lecture two. Okay. Okay. So in in this theorem is for alpha smaller than two. Okay. So when alpha is smaller than two, there is no continuous part. So there is no continuous part in the Levy process that is behind the stable because of uh, Lamperti transformation. Remember, Lamperti transformation does not change the path. 
So I'm, I'm not adding discontinuities or continuities by making a time change, okay? So if there is no, con there is no continuous part in Y, there is no continuous part in Psi star, okay? And the Levy measure, is given by pi star dy divided by dy is equal to c plus exponential of y, exponential of y minus 1 to the 1 plus alpha indicator y is bigger than 0, plus, plus C minus exponential of y, absolute value of exponential of y, minus 1 to the 1 plus alpha um, indicator y is smaller than 0 for y real. Okay. Um, There is, there is more in this uh, theorem. We have that if C plus and C minus are taken as C plus gamma 1 plus alpha sinus alpha pi rho. Rho is again the positivity parameter, okay, divided by pi and C minus is equal to gamma 1 plus alpha sinus alpha pi 1 minus rho divided by pi, okay, for rho in between 0 and 1, then rho is still the positivity parameter, and more important, The characteristic exponent of psi star at 1 when 1 is smaller than the lifetime. Okay. So in order to be able to determine this exponential, I need the process to be alive. This should be, this is equal to exponential of minus psi of psi star of lambda. And psi of psi star of lambda is equal to a quotient of gammas, gamma alpha minus i lambda divided by gamma of alpha 1 minus rho minus i lambda times gamma 1 plus i lambda divided by gamma 1 minus alpha 1 minus rho plus i lambda. And this happening for all lambda real And the fact okay, so it can be written in that uh, in that form, okay. But the fact that we grow that as a product of two function functions is more than a coincidence. 
This is coming from the Wienerhof factorization. I, I will uh, recall that later for those of you who are not familiar with that. Okay? But in fact, the Wienerhof factorization tells us that the characteristic exponent of a Levy process can always be written as the characteristic exponent of, of the product, as a product of the characteristic exponent of two subordinators. One is the upward ladder height subordinator, so describing the supremum of the process. And the other one is the downward ladder height process, which is describing the infimum of the process. Okay? So this is for the upward ladder height, and this is for the downward ladder height process associated to psi star. Okay? But if you don't know that for the moment, that is not uh, an issue. But this is important because for, uh, for a lot of time, for, for a long time, there were just a few examples of uh, Levy processes for which uh, the, the Wienerhof factorization was known explicitly. Okay? So thanks to this uh, work of Lampert, this representation, uh, Kipriano, Pardo, uh, no, Pardo and Kuznetsov were able to make this explicit okay? and find one, another example of, uh, the, of an explicit Wienerhof factorization. Okay? This is Is there any question with respect to the statement of the theorem? No? Okay. Okay. So to, to prove this theorem, what I really need to do is to prove that the lifetime uh, has a parameter of, uh, is it, that, that it is exponential, we know it from the Lamperti transformation, okay? We need to determine the, the parameter, okay? So that is one of the things that we need to do. And then we need to do, we need to check <coughs> that the Levy measure is of this form, okay? I don't need to check that sigma is equal to zero because we know there is no continuous part in the process. Okay? And uh, well, there are several ways to do it. One of them is by working with the, with the infinitesimal generator, but I don't want to do that. I prefer to work with the jumps of, uh, of psi star. Okay? Uh, we know that the jumps of psi star, so it's uh, form a Poisson point process with intensity pi dx. That means that if we count the number of points t positive such that t and psi star t minus psi star t minus, okay, and these are in some set uh, b for B being any Borel set of zero infinity times R minus zero, okay? This random variable follows 
a Poisson distribution with parameters, the integral with respect with Lebesgue measure on zero infinity, and the integral with respect to pi dx on r minus zero of the indicator of S B, uh, sorry, Sx being in B. Okay? So this is a random, this is a Poisson random variable, and the parameter is just the area under this measure of B. Okay? And there is something that is uh, very important for me is the compensation formula which tell us okay that pi is the unique uh, here I should write pi star pi star for the Levy measure of psi star Yeah, pi star. Okay, is the unique measure such that the expected value of the sum of jumps up to the lifetime of any function of time and of the jump. Okay, this expected value is equal to the expected value of the integral between zero and uh, the lifetime d t and the integral with respect to pi star dx for x in r minus zero of f of t and x, okay? For any f positive measurable such that f of zero is equal to zero. Okay? So if we count count of we determine the expected value of uh, jumps that satisfy a condition, okay? That is just the same as the expected value of the area of that. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of that. Uh, uh, sorry? Let's the alphabet with the. Yeah, basic. C? So. Uh, is it, uh, uh, C. Yeah. Theta. Yeah. Theta. Theta. Okay, and this is the first time where psi t is equal to minus infinity. Okay, it's just the lifetime of uh, psi. I'm saying uh, there is something missing here. Mm, no, that's okay. Yeah, is that? Okay, so the Levy measure, okay, is the unique measure that satisfies this identity, in fact, okay. And that, that in fact, happens for any Levy process, okay. And uh, in fact, you can do a bit more. You can do, uh, instead of putting here a function just of the jump, you can put something that depends also on the past of the process before time t. Okay? So we can, this function, the, the formula will still be true if we take something that is random, okay, but depending on the past of the process up to time t. A strict past. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So <clears throat> I'm going to write this in terms of x, OK? And then using the properties of x, then I'm going to find this and the time change. So, if I take the sum of f t psi star t minus i star t minus, this by construction of a psi star is just the expected value over the sum of f t and then the log of uh, y b t over y b t minus, OK? And this on the event where y b t is different than y bt minus, OK? And bt is smaller than the first passage time below zero. So remember that psi star by Lamperti transformation is the log of y bt or y0, OK, where bt is the inverse of y s to the minus alpha uh, 0 to s y u du bigger than t. Uh -huh. And that, uh, yes, tau 0 minus is the lifetime of y, OK? Just by the way we constructed y, OK? So y dies at the first passage time below 0 for x, OK? OK. So if we take the difference of this guy and this guy left limit, we just get the quotient of y b t divided by y b t minus. One point that is very important here is that, again, that bt okay, is a continuous function, okay, because it's the inverse of a continuous function. Okay. So every discontinuity point of y corresponds to a discontinuity point of psi. I okay. am not adding or removing discontinuity points in these two guys. Okay? I'm just observing them at a different scale of time. Okay? So if I add all of them in the lifetime, I add all of them in the lifetime of the other guy. Okay? So this is equal then to the expected value for t is smaller than tau 0 minus of f of the integral from 0 to t of y s to the minus alpha ds, and then the log of y s, uh, y t over y t minus on the event where y t is different from y t minus and uh, yeah, y t is strictly positive. Okay. 
So it's just this, if this is a, if this is a time where there is a discontinuity for this uh, process, okay, it is, th then this time is a discontinuity for this guy. Okay? Just by inversion. Remember, t is equal to the integral of to bt of y s to the minus alpha ds. Okay? Because they are just inverse functions. Okay? So I change the scale of time from here to here. Okay? I make a change of variables. Okay, but before, because I'm observing y up to the first passage time below zero, up to its lifetime, this is the same as, as observing x everywhere. Okay, so I can change into x. Okay, but x is a, a stable process. Okay. So I have the compensation formula for the stable process. OK? So by the compensation formula, This will be equal to the expected value from zero to the first passage time below zero of the integral in r minus zero by dx. This is the Levy measure of the stable process. Okay, maybe I should write it as a capital X just to clarify. Okay, and then. There is an f of the integral from 0 to t of x s to the minus alpha ds. And then there is the log of 1 plus y divided by x t minus. This is in the event where x t minus plus y is bigger than zero. Okay, so this this term here is just coming from writing here x t is equal to x t minus plus x t minus x t minus. Okay, this is the jump, the jump that I that I am counting. Okay, and so I replace the jump by an integral with respect to y. Yeah. Okay, and then this is something that is depending on the past. This is something that is depending on the past. So I can use the compensation formula, OK? OK. So I will write this as 1 plus 2, where 1 is pi, the restriction of pi to y positive, OK? And 2 is pi, the integral of pi restricted to y smaller than 0. Is everything clear so far? Or in this uh, equality, at least? Yeah? 
Do you believe it? Yeah. Koji? Uh, Kasu? <laughs> The indicator? Yes, we don't need it. Uh, I don't omit it, just uh, to remember here that I shouldn't uh, go below zero because there will be a problem here. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just to to be sure that the log is well defined. But of course, it's well defined because of this, indeed. But there is one reason I am keeping it there. Because, oh, because here is T, OK? <coughs> by, le by, by the Levec, uh, because this is the Levec measure, and this is uh, countable, OK? These continuities are countable. Then I can remove the left limit by the right limit. And then I, then I need this, OK? Yes, you're right. So this is equal to the expected value from 0 to tau 0 minus dt indicator r minus 0 pi x dy f integral 0 t x is to the minus alpha ds and the log of 1 plus y over xt indicator uh, xt plus y is bigger than 0. So I keep track of this indicator that is here, okay? Just because later I will change to xt instead of xt minus, because I'm integrating with respect to Levesque measure, okay? So I don't see the discontinuity points in this integral, okay? Okay. Mm. Where should I grab right now? So the integral 1 is just the expected value from 0 to tau 0 minus of dt indicator y being bigger than 0, c plus dy, uh, y 1 plus alpha, okay, f of ct, ct is the integral. And then log of 1 plus y xt indicator y plus xt is bigger than 0. Okay. I just replace the expression of pi, okay, because I'm taking the restriction of y bigger than 0. Okay. Then I make a change of variables to be c equal to log 1 plus y divided by xt. Okay. If I do that, I will get that dy is equal to xt exponential c dc. Yeah. So this becomes the expected value of the integral from 0 to tau 0 minus of dt xt to the minus alpha, the integral for c being, being bigger than 0, just because y is bigger than 0, OK? So c is bigger than 0. And then I have a dc times c plus, then ec minus 1, 1 plus alpha exponential c f of the integral from 0 to t x is to the minus alpha ds and then c and then indicator mm -mm 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 -mm. yeah 
the indicator is here now. Okay. This indicator here is becoming this one. Okay. Okay. Um, dun, dun. Then I just make a change of variables s equal to the integral or u equal to the integral from 0 to s equal to the integral from 0 to t of x u to the minus alpha du. Okay. So this dt is just the differential of the s. So this is the expected value from zero to now theta, the lifetime of ds. This xt is going away because of the change of variables. This is what I wanted to prove here for x positive. Are we happy with this uh, calculation? Okay. Do you have a question? Look like. So <clears throat> if I do this with the first term, I get the Levy measure on the positive part. Okay? I do the same thing for uh, the second integral. I get the Levy measure on the negative part. Okay? And then I get the expression, the full expression that I need here. Okay? And then I'm, I'm done with that part. Okay? Um, well, I like uh, this calculation because it's something that can also be done in a general setting, okay? For a general uh, d-dimensional stable process. Of course, the, the, everything becomes nastier because uh, we are now we will be working in a, with a d-dimensional measure. But, uh, other than that, the same calculation works in general. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So this, this finish the proof of the third claim. Okay, let me prove the first, the first one. And here again, the compensation formula will be very useful. For that, we need uh, a lemma, which is that the expected value starting from uh, 1 of f of uh, tau 0 minus Actually, yeah, from any x, this can be written as the expected value 
of the integral from zero to infinity in dt of f of t of the expected value of pi of minus infinity xt for t is smaller than tau zero minus. For any f from zero to infinity into zero infinity measurable, okay. this is a consequence again of the compensation formula. And the reason for that is that tau zero minus, okay, um, yeah, tau zero minus will happen at the first time where the process jumps from a, a position above zero into a position below zero, okay, and it's uh, instantaneously that happens with this rate. With uh, easy, I will suggest this as an exercise. And there is one important con uh, consequence, consequence, which is that the expected value, starting from x, of the integral between 0 and infinity of pi, mm, okay. so this implies that the expected value of the integral between 0 and infinity of pi of minus infinity xt when t is smaller than tau zero minus uh, dt is equal to one. Okay. Because this function that is here is just the density of this uh, random variable. Okay? But this is the same as writing that the expected value of the integral from zero to tau zero minus of pi of minus infinity xt dt is equal to one. Okay, but who is this uh, quantity here? Pi of minus infinity x is just <coughs> equal to c minus divided by alpha of x to the alpha for x, um, yeah, absolute value, for x negative. Okay. Mm. Yeah, sorry, for x positive, let me write it as it is. Uh, sorry, here there is a mistake. I think. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. This quantity that we have here, okay, this quantity is equal to this one, okay? Now remember that the lifetime of psi star is such that it has the same law as the integral from zero to tau zero minus 
of x s to the minus alpha d s. Okay. So this integral that we have here is in fact equal to the expected value of the integral between 0 and tau 0 minus of x s to the minus alpha <coughs> ds times c plus over alpha, and this is equal to 1. Yeah? So this guy here is just uh, c times c to the alpha. So we have that the expected value of c times c minus divided by alpha, this is a c minus, is equal to 1. Yeah? So the expected value of the lifetime is equal to alpha divided by c minus. Okay? So this is equal to 1 over the parameter of the exponential. Okay? And that, uh, that is the main, that is the proof of uh, the second claim, or the first claim. Is that okay? This is an exercise that we can uh, we can check tomorrow if you want. And what else? Yeah, from if we if we believe this, then we get this immediately, okay? And it's just identifying this um, this Levy measure with this quantity here. Okay, let me just uh, finish the lecture by describing two more processes related to, to the stable. The first one is y op arrow, which is x condition to stay positive. Okay? So this one is the process obtained by making tau zero go to infinity. Okay, and then there is a second one, which is y down arrow, which is x condition to reach zero continuously. So this one is the one that we obtain by conditioning this guy to go to zero from the left. Okay. Whatever this meaning, this means. Okay. I will describe that. Okay. But these two processes are self-similar. Because the conditioning will not change the scaling property, okay? 
And then they are the, the Lamperti transformation of some Levy processes. Okay. So why Oparo can be seen as the Lamperti transformation? So let me write it as the LT of a process psi Oparo. And why Danaro can be seen as a Lamperti transformation of a process sine psi Danaro, okay? And I would like to know who are these two processes. Psi Oparo and Psi Danaro, and how are they? related to psi star. Okay. So in particular, can we find the characteristic uh, measure? And can we uh, find the characteristic exponent? Okay. The answer is yes. And it is uh, closely related to the expression I delete for the characteristic exponent, okay? We will see that these two processes are obtained as a Gersanov transform of this process, okay? Um, to make this statement precise is that the law of y oparo is that that is obtained by the conditioning so we take we have that p Oparo of an of uh, let's say starting from x of any function of uh, x s for s smaller than t is the limit as q or as t goes to infinity or as no sorry as u tends to infinity of the expected value starting from x of f of xs for s smaller than t, conditionally on the first passage time below zero to be bigger than t plus u. Okay. And by doing this conditioning, one can verify that the law of this process, starting from x on the filtration up to time t, is absolutely continuous with respect to the one of the process x killed at the first passage time below zero. And the density is xt to the alpha rho hat, rho bar, divided by x to the alpha rho bar of p x restricted on the event ft indicator t is smaller than tau zero minus. Okay, so what I'm claiming here is that this limit is well defined, okay? And then that what will appear from this conditioning is a density of this form. Okay. okay. 
And this uses that the probability that is appearing here behaves as t goes to infinity like a constant that depends on alpha and on rho hat that is known explicitly, but I will not explicit at the moment. And then an x to the alpha rho bar divided by t to the minus rho hat, rho bar, uh, t to the rho bar, okay, which can be seen in Bertrand's book. Okay. And this is a consequence of the fluctuation theory of Levy processes. So this, dense, this term that is here is, in fact, the one that we have here. Okay? And it will appear inside this because of the Markov property. Okay? And uh, this is also a consequence of a more general result on conditioning of uh, Levy processes to stay positive. In fact, this absolute continuity relation that we have here okay, can be translated into an absolute continuity relation for the Levy process that are behind. Okay. The absolute continuity uh, relation with a star. Holds true for stopping times. And this is a consequence to the opt of the optimal stopping of the optimal stopping uh, theorem. Why are we having the optimal stopping theorem, which is something for martingales? Or is, because here we have a martingale, in fact. Okay? So we, we pass, uh, yeah, we apply the martingale property on random times, and we can transfer this absolute continuity in absolute continuity for random times. Okay? And in particular, it holds for the random times appearing in the Lamperti transformation. Okay? So, in particular, for the random times bt equal to the inverse okay. So we, we define a new probability measure Oparo on f of bt, which is equal to x in bt uh, alpha rho hat rho bar x times p of x restricted to f on bt intersection 
Bt is smaller than tau zero minus. Okay. But what I am doing here by time changing this, okay. this time change is the one appearing in the Lamperti transformation. Okay. So the law that I get here is just the law of the process that is uh, associated to y oparu via Lamperti transform. OK, so this is the law of psi oparu. OK. OK, so I do a conditioning. I get a new probability measure. That probability measure is related to the original one via this density. OK. And when I do the time change that appears in the Lamperti transform, on the right-hand side, I get the Levy process that is behind the stable killed at the first passage time below zero, so psi star. And, the left, and at the left-hand side, I get the law of the process, of the Levy process that is behind the stable process condition to stay positive. OK? So by doing this and plugging all the, all the bits, what I get is that P oparu up to F bt is equal to exponential alpha rho hat psi star. And then P, where? P, or let's say P star, is the law of psi star. And this is true up to the filtration up to time bt. This is for time t. There is something uh, that is important here, is that this process has a finite lifetime. Okay? But this one, because it's a process condition to stay positive, okay, if this process has an infinite lifetime, this one here should have an infinite lifetime, <coughs> okay? because we will observe the whole path of the process. We will not kill the process at an exponential time. OK, so under this process, we get a process that has an infinite lifetime. This one has a pro is uh, carried by the paths that are killed at an exponential time. OK, so this absolute continuity relation just holds locally. It will not hold over the whole interval of life. OK, because they are orthogonal, in fact. OK. OK. This was a, a bit fast, I, I know. But um, really what, uh, what we need here is just this estimate, OK? We need that we can put the limit into the integral that is here, OK? But then once we know we can do this, the rest uh, just follows, OK? And this has been studied by uh, John Montandoni. in the paper by, of uh, Levy processes condition to stay positive. OK? So there, one can check that this uh, limit is well defined. OK? And in the particular case of a stable, it becomes this. OK? And then, I apply the time change and I get the rest. Okay. And uh, something similar happens for the for the other process for the process condition to go uh, to hit zero continuously. But I state that uh, tomorrow. I think it's better.
Are there any questions or comments? Complaints? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so tomorrow I will give uh, a few more details about this, about the case uh, where the process is conditioned to hit zero continuously, and then I will work on the exponential functionals of uh, Levy processes, okay? And, and maybe a little bit on entrance loads. Okay, thank you. <laughs>